Imagine waking up one morning and realizing that the technology powering your phone, your car, your home, even your country's defense systems, is suddenly caught in the middle of a global showdown. Not a shooting war, but a war fought in spotless clean rooms, in secretive patent offices, and inside billion-dollar factories, where the tiniest slices of silicon can shift the balance of global power. And here's the twist. It's not happening in some far-off future. It's happening right now. This is the semiconductor war between the United States and China, and it's quietly becoming one of the most important battles of our time. For decades, the global semiconductor supply chain was a shining example of how nations could work together despite differences. Dutch companies like ASML made the world's most advanced lithography machines, the crown jewels of chip manufacturing. Taiwan's TSMC mastered the art of mass-producing, cutting-edge chips, with precision so high it made watchmaking look sloppy. American firms like NVIDIA and AMD designed processors and AI accelerators that set the global performance standard. And China, with its vast network of factories and assembly lines, provided the manufacturing scale that kept electronics affordable and everywhere. It was a system that worked. Built on trust, interdependence, and the shared belief that everyone benefited from open markets. But trust, as we've learned, can vanish overnight. Over the past few years, geopolitics turned cooperation into competition, and competition into outright confrontation. Sanctions, export bans, tariffs, and blacklists began pulling apart a system that took decades to build. The breaking point came on January 18, 2025, when Beijing stunned the tech world. In one sweeping move, it announced an indefinite ban on buying any new lithography machines from ASML and stopped all advanced chip collaborations with TSMC. It was a shot across the bow, a clear signal that China was done relying on foreign partners for its most critical technology. This didn't happen in a vacuum. Washington had already pressured the Dutch government to revoke ASML's export licenses to China. Maintenance, software updates, and spare parts for existing machines? All cut off. TSMC announced it would fully comply with U.S. export rules, ending work with Chinese firms on cutting-edge process nodes. In an instant, China's most valuable chip-making tools, worth billions, were frozen in place, unable to take on new jobs or even receive calibration updates. The message from the West was blunt. If you want the latest chips, you'll have to play by our rules. But here's where the story takes a sharp turn. China didn't fold, it fought back. Before I explain how, a quick pause. If you're finding this topic as fascinating as I think you are, hit that like button and share this video with friends. It really helps spread the word and keep independent content like this going. Now, back to the plot twist. China's fight back wasn't some last minute scramble. It had been years in the making. Long before the bans, Chinese planners saw the storm coming. Between 2022 and 2024, over $75 billion was poured into the domestic semiconductor sector. The money came from everywhere. Sovereign wealth funds, state-owned banks, government grants, and private partnerships. It was a coordinated national mission, not just an industry project. Factories raced to grab as much Western equipment as possible before the doors shut. In fact, in 2024, imports of chip-making tools into China actually surged by 34%. Not what you'd expect from a country under heavy sanctions. Then came the breakthroughs that shocked the industry. In March 2025, a small Shenzhen company called Sakar unveiled its own deep ultraviolet DUV, lithography system that could produce features under 7 nanometers, a technical feat most experts believed was impossible without ASML's most advanced EUV machines. Within days, Huawei announced its Mate 60 Pro smartphone, powered by a 7 nanometer Mercurin chip made entirely in China. No EUV, no foreign help just older tools pushed to their absolute limits using clever multi-patterning and AI-driven defect correction. Meanwhile, Smicey, China's largest foundry, began prototyping a 5 mm process. Rumors spread that it was even eyeing 3 mm production, something thought to be unreachable under sanctions. These advances changed the numbers fast. In 2023, 85% of China's high-performance chips were imported. By the end of 2024, that figure had dropped below 60%. That's a huge turnaround in such a short time. 
But this isn't just about making chips, it's about owning the future. In 2024 alone, Chinese companies filed over 21,000 semiconductor-related patents, a 34% increase from the year before. This shift from catching up to aggressively building intellectual property means that China isn't just playing defense anymore. It's building a fortress of innovation, and the competition is no longer confined to technology. China has begun using its financial strength as a weapon, gradually selling off U.S. Treasury bonds and shifting reserves into other currencies and commodities. These moves, subtle but deliberate, can raise U.S. borrowing costs, pressure the dollar, and ripple through global markets. Western suppliers are already feeling the squeeze. ASML's sales to China fell 27% in late 2024. TSMC is seeing slower orders from Chinese clients. American chip tool companies like Applied Materials and LAM Research are losing service contracts. The world's biggest tech market is slowly slipping out of Western hands. This raises the question, what comes next? Does the West try to patch things up, perhaps offering incentives to restore cooperation? Or does it double down on restrictions, hoping pressure will slow China down? And here's where I want your opinion. If you were advising your country's leaders, would you push for more collaboration or for tougher measures? Let me know in the comments because this is a debate with no easy answers, and the choices made now will shape the next decade. The ripple effects are everywhere. Think about it. Your next phone, your car's onboard computer, your smart home, even hospital medical equipment. All of it relies on advanced chips. If the global chip supply changes, so do prices, availability, and even the pace of innovation. China's rapid pivot from dependency to leadership is already shifting the global balance of power. Every time its engineers master a smaller chip size, it reduces Western leverage and boosts Beijing's strategic freedom. The West is racing to respond. Research teams are exploring quantum computing, photonic chips, and new semiconductor materials. If these breakthroughs arrive fast enough, they could leapfrog China's progress. But there's no guarantee. Cutting-edge tech takes time, and in this contest, every year lost is ground that may never be recovered. And remember, the chip war is just one front. This rivalry spans trade routes, rare earths, green energy, space technology, and now even currency strategy. But semiconductors may be the most critical piece because they're the foundation for all the rest. We've entered a new era, one where nations see technological sovereignty not as an option, but as survival. The age of shared supply chains is giving way to an age of guarded independence. And here's the reality check. Whether your next gadget comes from California, Taiwan, or Shenzhen, it will be shaped by this rivalry. The decisions made in Washington and Beijing today will influence not just products, but the balance of global power for years to come. Thanks for watching. If you found this breakdown useful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. I really appreciate you being here. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and independent.